Some examples of craziness on the left. A tech CEO this last week got into trouble. He really triggered people when he implied that being out of shape impacted your work performance. People got very upset. I think it's body shaming. It can't do that. Can't expect people to actually be in shape. Or you, or you can't actually say it. Everybody knows it, but you can't actually say it. That health is related to how you take care of yourself. Health is related to some extent, whether you're in shape or not. Health is related to work performance. Can't say that stuff. But this is the funny stuff. Uh, this is from uh, another... Another uh, uh, one of these uh, sub-stacks that I really, really enjoy. You, you might like this. I, I recommend this. It's piratewires.com. Piratewires.com. This guy um, is interesting. He, he works for Peter Thiel at Founders Fund. He's a Silicon Valley guy, and he likes to make fun. He, he, likes, to, he likes to really go after what's going on in San Francisco. Uh, I, I learned a lot about how San Francisco has really, really become horrific to live in from him uh, and uh, and he has a he has good good stuff on cancer culture but he also has other other stuff some of it's not as good but but it's definitely worth reading pirate wire pirate wires with an s at the end dot com anyway um, somebody in the New York Times suggested that Pepe Le Pew do you remember Pepe Le Pew some of you might be old enough to remember Pepe Le Pew Pepe Le Pew is a cartoon skunk, supposedly from 75 years ago. I didn't know I was that old because I've seen Pepe Le Pew. I, I, Pepe Le Pew is, this 70, is a cartoon skunk who flirts, flirts, is constantly looking for a woman, constantly looking for a mate, and he flirts with anything. He's French. He's got a heavy French accent, and he, and he flirts, and he, he off, often... You know, it, there's often this confusion. Is it a skunk or is it a squirrel? Or is it, it, it's funny. I thought it was funny when I was a kid. But according to the New York Times, Charles Blow, I guess, uh, Pepe Le Pew has contributed to rape culture. Rape culture. I'm not making this up. I really am not making it up. Pepe Le Pew has contributed to rape culture. Speedy Gonzalez. Do you remember Speedy Gonzalez? Speedy Gonzalez was great. He was like the best, the best superhero in cartoon form. Like I used to watch Speedy Gonzalez all the time. It perpetuated racial stereotypes. I wonder what stereotype. That Mexicans are really fast. That they have accents. What is the stereotype that Speedy Gonzalez perpetuated? Yeah, riba, riba, riba. <laughs> Andale. It was great. I love Speedy Gonzalez. I used to anyway. I don't know what I'd think if I saw it today. And it's... And I watch Speedy Gonzalez, and I don't think... I don't think... I don't think I have any real stereotypes against Mexicans, Hispanics. Quite the contrary. I live in Puerto Rico, after all. The internet this week was divided over the question of whether or not Lola Bunny... Now, Lola... I, oh, she's a bunny. She's a cartoon rodent. She's not even a bunny. Lola Bunny, a cartoon rodent from the 1996 Space Jam. I've seen the movie, but I can't remember Lola Bunny. So the internet was, was split, was divided, was undecided about whether she had been drawn in too sexy of a manner. Should the cartoon ro rodent, Lola Bunny, should, was she drawn in a too sexy manner? Now, I don't know what too sexy means. What does too sexy mean? On Twitter, one of my favorite cartoon figures of all time, Jessica Rabbit, was dragged into the mix. 
And the question was, were the illustrators of Who Framed Roger Rabbit when they portrayed Jessica Rabbit, who I had a crush on for a long time, were they um, critiquing sexism with their two busty cartoon femme fatale, or were they just a bunch of perverts? And maybe they were both. Um, I mean, it's something when we reach a state where our, lead, where our intellectuals are obsessed with and are getting more accused from, you know, the sex lives of cartoon animals. It's, it's insane. But this is part of this whole attitude that exists today. Let's take Dr. Seuss. Now, we've got six books that have been um, excluded. The state has decided not to carry six books of Dr. Seuss, not to republish them, because there were racial insensitivities in them. Now, fine. The states, it's their right. They can do what they want. And indeed, uh, if I remember right, there are some images that, yeah, probably a little inappropriate in Dr. Seuss from that perspective. Okay. But we can't have a conversation about it. We can't just redraw those characters and change them a little bit. We can't make any kind of modifications. We have to not publish the books. But it's not just that they don't publish the books. It's that they make a big announcement about it. They make it, make it an enormous big deal. This massive virtue signaling to the world. And then, eBay. eBay, I think, has felt left out from the whole cult cancel culture mayhem of the last few years. They've been left out of what you know, Twitter and others have done. eBay then decided to ban sale from individual to individual of used copies of these books. Why? If people voluntarily want to exchange these. Now, remember, this is eBay. eBay on which you can find a used, in good shape, good binding of Mein Kampf, of lots of racist literature. But right now, it's important. It's crucial that corporations, CEOs, intellectuals, business leaders, publishers, signal their virtue to the world. Signal to the new inquisitors, the cultural inquisitors, that they are good people. You know. Look, there's no question that some people are racist. I know some of you dispute that, but some people are indeed racist. Some material in Dr. Seuss books might be insensitive. And suddenly the state isn't within their right to decide what the hell they want. But come on. Be adults. Have a spine. Talk about these things. The fact that CEOs, businessmen are so fearful today, so unbelievably fearful of standing up to these, I'll call them cultural inquisitors. They don't have torture chambers, but they can ruin your career. They demand confessions. Yes, I'm a racist, I apologize. And they can shape the culture in which we live. These are inquisitors with immense power. And yet today, the label thrown around of racist is making the term meaningless. And this is the real danger because there are racists out there, including the people throwing around the term, who are racist. But they're making the term meaningless. A, um, a museum curator in, uh, in San Francisco, San Francisco, Modern Museum of Modern Art, not exactly my type of museum. 
he was criticized for not having enough non-white artists in the museum. And he said, you know, that he agreed. But then he added that the museum it will not stop collecting white artists entirely, even though he'll emphasize more non-white artists, because that would constitute reverse discrimination. What do you think happened to him? He was fired. There is no such thing as reverse discrimination. Reverse discrimination is a sign of racism. And this is like the new definition of racism, right? Non-whites, or in other words, people without power cannot be racists. So racism has been redefined as treating people based on your race from a position of power. That's not what racism means. Racism only means the first part of it. So, the guy was fired. Now, the guy's a committed leftist. He's, after all, works at the Modern Museum of Modern Art. And he wanted more non-white artists. But you can't utter something like reverse racism. Reverse discrimination. Unacceptable. It's a firing offense. We live today in a world of cowards. The people who sit on the board of directors of that museum don't think he's a racist. But they're afraid. They're afraid of those who hold them all high ground. They're afraid of the people who are manning the cultural inquisition. They're afraid of questioning, of, of challenging them. They're afraid of the consequence of themselves. They're afraid of being labeled racists. Instead of standing up to them or just ignoring them, which would be ideal, they're groveling before them. And by groveling before them, they are taking us one step at a time towards the destruction of this civilization. What we need today what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages, and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.